What is up YouTube? This is Zach, Dewey Media Home Theater, and I'm out here today doing a really cool project for a customer here in uh, North Dallas. We got a Sony 295, which he is projecting currently onto the wall. And um, I just shipped this to him. He got pretty excited, went ahead and set it up. And today we came back to hook up the SI Zero Edge uh, Pure Gray with the backlit LED kit. So I kind of wanted to, this, this video is gonna show how to assemble it, how to uh, set up the projector, how to align it, and basically how to properly configure this exact setup. But the customer, since he had it on the wall, I wanted to show you what it looks like so that you could kind of, uh, you know, see for yourself. A lot of you guys tell me that you broadcast on the wall and I got here and the customer was like, oh, it looks pretty good. It does look pretty good because it's an awesome projector, but it's gonna look even better when we get his screen up there on the wall. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Check it out. Dog. <laughs> oh no worries it's real life right uh yeah so you can see this is a really nice projector uh, sony 295 best-selling native 4k projector five grand msrp um you guys know we got nationwide free shipping low price guarantee on these guys um but as far as the picture goes it's about to get real so i'm gonna go ahead and unbox this uh, put it together get it mounted on the wall we're gonna run a new 4k fiber hdmi cable and I'm gonna hook up the 295, get this puppy mounted to the ceiling. Let's do it. Okay, so we just cleared out the space and you can see I have the SI ZET 133PG, that's the pure gray. They also have it in the pure white. The NABKNA. This is the Zero Edge with the backlit LED kit and has a thin bezel black velvet frame and it's a pure gray material this is an incredible uh, value if you'd like that zero edge look but you're not wanting to break the bank on a slate um, or a black diamond material it'll still perform very well i've, I've used this combo before uh, with the fixed frame but i haven't done it with the zero edge yet in person i've shipped it to people but I haven't seen it in person so i'm really excited to uh, do this for you guys. I'm going to show you exactly how we set it up. So let's start by getting it unboxed. Got your uh, manual here. If you've never put it together, I suggest you read the manual. Don't wing it or watch this video very closely. <laughs> Even though I am demonstrating on how to do this yourself, you can see the customer just helped me. Uh, it is nice to have a buddy help you out whenever you're doing stuff like this. But if you had to, you could definitely do it yourself. All right, here's the accessory box. Show you guys what's in here. We have all our elbow brackets on the corners of the unit. You have your mounts. There's only two. Very simple design. You just make sure you mount it into a stud and it hangs on there just like a pitcher. Gloves if your fingers are dirty and the other set of brackets. So they actually have two sections on every corner where the brackets go, which I'll show you shortly. You have your RGB remote and the little SI badge that's magnetic. Um, that just sticks to the bottom when you're finished. Comes with some extra bolts, the screws, everything that you need to get this up on the wall, which is nice. And the LED kit is pretty expensive. It's like four or 500 bucks, but you can see it's worth it because it's already 
prefab. It's made for this unit. So you're not rigging it to make it work. It's just ready to rock and roll. It's, uh, they also you know, make the brackets that hold the controller in place, which I really like, so it's not just floating back there. This is your screen fabric here. And we're just gonna put this aside for right now. It's gonna be one of the last things you do. These are the outer frames right here. This is the black velvet part. So again, this is gonna be one of the last things you put on. The main frame right here, this is, this is the first step in getting this put together. big thick piece this is your your outer edge and you're just gonna line it up around on the floor this room is just big enough all right so I just got all of the pieces laid out you can see it's starting to look like a screen now screen innovations they pre set all of the little toggles again it's the small things it just makes your life a little easier so like just like the screen lights you just pop these guys off like this and then these are already in place you don't have to count out how many you need they got it ready to go for you so you just spread these out all the way down like this here's your led kit that i was talking about guys see how it's like already on there and prefabbed they got the IR sensor ready to rock and roll you got this they like built a metal piece for it that holds the LED controller so I can see why they charge the premium that they do all we have to do now is just peel this off the adhesive and run it around pretty simple I'm gonna get all of my toggles spread out and then I'll put my elbows in and show you what it looks like okay so this is the first corner you can see I just got my two elbows in there you actually have a thick and a thin one. Can you see that? The thin one goes on the bottom, thick one goes on the top. And then they slide together like that. You wanna make sure your edges line up super tight so that it's square. If you do not square them up like that and then you get it up on the wall, you're gonna think to yourself, oh my image is warped my projector isn't right no your screen's just not square so just take a little extra time make sure it's super square and then i even measure from side to side and uh top to bottom just to make sure all right guys so uh the next thing that we're gonna do uh, now that we have all four corners attached is i'm gonna take the screen fabric and i'm gonna roll it out do not use blades recommended so you don't destroy your brand new screen all right guys so you can see now i have all of my corners done you want to hit those corners first so that it's evenly stretched if you take a look it's nice and tight that's what you're looking for and if you see little wrinkles like this in the screen i'm not sure if you guys can see it see how they're going this way and this way from the uh being rolled up those will come out within the first week of being on the wall they'll just naturally release in some really tough circumstances where it's been in extreme cold or heat sometimes uh, you got to take a blow dryer to it that's a little pro tip um, not super close but just very lightly take a blow dryer and that's actually what screen innovations the manufacturer recommends but most of the time it'll just work itself out so i got all my corners done and now we're just starting to button them all down all the way around okay so we are making some good progress you can see all the way around we have these buttoned in nice and even all the way down corners are nice and straight that's what you're looking for because if not think about it when you go to put that outer frame on if if these aren't fully around the edge you're gonna see a little bit of the black frame instead of your screen and that's not what you're going for 
I'll go ahead and put the RGB kit all the way around and then we will flip it around. Depending on how technology goes. Okay. So these RGB kits, what we're gonna do is just take it all the way around the screen, like so. Super easy because they already have it ready to rock and roll. All you have to do is just peel off the adhesive on the back here and you're ready to go. I don't have a pocket knife because I can't fly with one. <laughs> and I left it at home. All right, here we go, now we're going. You want the RGB wires all the way in the hole so that your lighting actually is starting right in the middle because if not what happens is is on the wall you'll see just a little section that doesn't have the lighting i know because i've done it <laughs> and what's nice about these leds too versus your 30 dollar amazon ones is because screen innovation manufactured it it fits like a glove in here I've done it before with just one, one, some ones I got off Amazon and it wouldn't fit in there so it was kind of hanging out and the way that the projection, the, the angle of these are on the wall, the, the angle they have it, it projects really nicely and illuminates the wall well. So again, I'm low on battery, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this all the way around, and then I will show you what it looks like. Little thing is, when you go to cut them, you gotta cut on the line. And the line is a little copper section right here. See where it says negative and positive, or positive 12 volts there. RGB, you cut right down that white line. All right, check it out. We got our RGB kit all the way around. Looking good. Here at the top where they meet, they're gonna overlap a little bit. You see how right here is the edge where I cut it? Well, I basically, the other one ended right here and I just overlapped it a little. So I cut both of them right on that line and made them overlap so that, see that LED and that LED will line up with the same spacing as those, uh, giving it really nice glow even glow all the way around so i'm gonna plug it in make sure that it works and then flip it over and uh, put our frame on actually i think you put the frame on with it downwards like this but that's the next step is to get our thin bezel on there okay so um like i was saying you do want to uh, put this on prior to flipping it over you can see there's that thin edge right here and it's just going to clip right on like that and then you have your screw that goes right in there and that goes on all the corners so we're going to go around the whole room and get them on there so once you have them all locked up like this they kind of just slip right into place your screws will line right up like that. And you're just gonna tighten it down. Put the camera down so you can see. I'm gonna hold the edge together as tight as I can so that there's no crease on the outside here or minimal crease. And then crank it down. Just like that, so now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do it on all of the other three corners. All right guys, so we are moving right along. This screen is looking sharp. We are ready to throw it on the wall. So you got your two little cutouts here, or not cutouts, you have your two little mounting plates here. These are steel. And what we're gonna do uh, is find our studs up on the wall. You can see the 
previous homeowner used drywall anchors all the way across. Maybe they didn't have a stud finder. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into studs. That way we don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna measure off each side and probably mount like one here and then one the same distance over there, depending on how the studs line out. All right, guys, so we are moving right along. The next step is going to be installing the screen to the wall, but I wanna find out where my studs are, as well as where I can mount the plates that the screen's gonna hang on. You don't want it outside the screen, and you don't want them smushed right in the middle either. You want them distributed pretty evenly uh, on whatever studs you can find in the wall. So, this is the center of my wall. I'm gonna be putting one somewhere in here, and then I'm about to measure the other distance. So that's kind of the inner part of the screen. So I know the other one's gonna go somewhere in here. That way, whenever it's hanging on there, you got nice distribution both ways. Now we're gonna take our stud finder and we're gonna figure out where the studs are. So I just use tape. We can use a little bit of pencil mark on the wall. Alright, so we got one stud right there. It's nice to have a stud finder that shows you the middle of the stud as well, so that whenever you go to put it in, you're right in the, the meat of the wood, and you don't have to worry about it stripping out. Same thing over here. So you can see this is working out just as expected. You have 16 inch studs typically in most residential homes. Some older homes or really basic spec homes would be 24 inch, um, but 16 inch is pretty typical. So you know roughly where your studs are gonna be. So now I'm gonna measure from the top of the ceiling down and mark mount these plates at three and a Order, if I recall correctly, from the top of the screen, which is the little lip, yeah, three and a quarter from the top of the screen, which is where the little lip sits. I was showing you this earlier, right in here. That's where you're, you're gonna hang it. So I'm gonna take the measurement of the height of the screen, hold it up and figure out where I'm gonna put it. Okay, so we're sitting at 66 and a quarter. Customer does have tower speakers, so we want to take that into account. And they also have two rows of seating, so if the customer is just going to have one row of seating, you know, this might be kind of high with the towers, but I think it's going to be appropriate for the space with two rows of seating so that if you're in the back row, you can see over the people in the front row. So we'll probably just butt it up pretty close to the bottom of the, or sorry, the top of the speaker. So what do you think about that, sir? Yeah. We got the approval. So I'll go ahead and mark that out right there and then we can start bolting her in. Now this method doesn't always work just because, believe it or not, people that sheetrock don't always sheetrock the corners, the edges straight. So you may have to pull the screen down and readjust, but this will give a good starting point. A lot of the time you get pretty lucky. All right, time to mount it. Uh, the reason using the level is important on these is because think about 
If you have one a little cockeyed, it's gonna kick up that side, so you want both sides perfectly level. And here's another thing that I do, a little pro tip on the second one that you do. Instead of putting your screw right at the very top, or right at the very bottom, put it right in the middle. And then if you need to, what you can do is just loosen it and move it, you know, a little bit at a time if it's off level, because you have that, that play right there of, you know, quarter to a half inch. Okay, so now that they're both mounted, I'm gonna do one last thing, just cause I wanna minimize the amount of work I do. I'm gonna measure from the ceiling and make sure that they're both exactly at 18 inches like I had expected. Sometimes when you go to tighten it down, you can move just a smidge. So, come up here. Oh, sorry, not 18, 21 and a quarter, because we came down three. Another thing I use tape for is whenever you're trying to determine the size of the screen that you want to use in a room, tape it off. Look at it for a week before you call me an order. That way you don't get it up on the wall and think, oh, it's too small or it's too big. You can sit there and have a conversation with your loved ones and make a decision. Help you visualize it a little bit. All right, we're right on the money. So if our line across the, the roof is straight, we should be good. All right guys, we just got it up here on the wall. It's not centered, so it's basically on a rail now, so I can slide it to center pretty easily. Just like that. And I'm gonna make sure that it is centered by measuring. So you got 25 on this side. Oh, 33, so you got eight inches. You gotta go four more inches over. Got 29 inches on that side and exactly 29 inches on that side. Perfect. Uh, we talked, or I talked with the customer, which he's in the room with me now, about where um, this is going to plug in. You have options. You can either just plug it into the outlet down below or we can relocate an outlet up behind the television as, or behind the screen as well. Um, for right now, we're just going to plug it in down below. I'm going to go ahead and fire it up, make sure it's still working. Perfect. Now there is different sensitivity levels on this guys, which is something that I don't think a lot of people realize because in the comments you guys say you know oh my gosh how do you view your imaging well you can turn it down really low the sensitivity to where like it's barely even on if you would like yeah you can turn down the sensitivity like this 
to where it's not as disruptive when you're in the pitch dark. Really, the LEDs are kind of just for setting the mood and you know giving that wow factor when your buddies walk into the room, um, or if you're you know watching the game, you have some lights on. It just adds to the the feel of of the space. It's not affecting your image quality in any type of way. If anything, uh, if you have really light walls, it can bounce off the walls and negatively affect the image quality. It's just aesthetics is what it's for so a lot of people turn them off completely when they view it but when you first walk into the room it's kind of cool to have it it on like this and depending on my mood i'll leave them on there's all different colors you can program this into a remote system as well like customized harmony i'm going to show them how you can add in screen innovations led kit to it I'm just kind of going through some of the colors for you guys but you can put it into your control system as well so that you don't have to directionally point it like this. Uh, you can run like a cat cable to the back of the screen and then splice in the IR sensor with two of the strands of the cat cable uh, so that you can put the IR sensor for your control system right over the IR sensor to this guy. All right, so next step, throw the Sony up. Okay guys, so we're moving on to the projector, which is um, requires a little bit of extra work because this system was set up 1080p before, it's HDMI, and to maximize the potential of this system, we're gonna need four x four x four, 18 gig uh, fiber HDMI. So I've attached the fiber HDMI here, and we're going to run this back to the AV closet through the Smurf tube. Luckily, this customer has a Smurf tube. If you don't have a Smurf tube, it can make it just a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to go on the other end now and tug on it and pull it right through. Okay, guys, we have our fiber optic HDMI in here. You can see you do want to make sure that you have the display going to the display side. These are directional. And then you want the source side going to the amplifier and all I did was just attach this cable to the previous HDMI the 1080p model and just pulled it right through luckily we had a smurf tube which is just an orange tube plastic tube that goes from here over to there all right guys so we're Starting to get there. We're finally uh, onto the projector. We got our screen up and we got our 4x4x4 four by four by four 18 gig cable put in and now we're going to put our mount on. You guys call me all the time just to order this one mount. This thing is a beast. It's the best projector mount. I pretty much exclusively use this because it has a micro adjustment. They call it a fine adjust projector mount. Um, it will support even the huge JVC projectors. It has a massive bolt pattern. And uh, the big thing is the fact that it has a gearbox. You can click by click, click by click, adjust it. Uh, if you're gonna do a zero edge screen, I would say don't even consider not using this guy because if not, you're holding it in place and tightening it with a screwdriver. And most of the time, because it's tension based, it ends up moving versus this, it has the gears in there. so it will hold its own. So you can slide the top plate off. This is the part that bolts to the ceiling, which I'll show you in just a second. Pop the back cover off. These are the adjustments here on the back. You can see you have vertical, horizontal uh, roll, as well as horizontal rotation. So you put this towards the back side, and then whenever it's up there on the ceiling, you can adjust it and there's little gears that spin in there. It's pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on. There's four set screws here and here and here and here. I'm going to go ahead and take those out so that we can access the back of the unit because the Sony's have a really small bolt pattern and you can see these guys go way out. All right. So we finally got those out. Now this whole thing slides off like that. And you can see it does show which direction it goes. So 
these guys here will screw in to the front two legs. And then this back one right here lines right up. So you're not gonna use these legs. This is for the larger projectors like the JVCs. There's a bunch of different screws, options for every type of projector. This is universal. You gotta figure out which one fits and the projector that you're using. So this is the, the screw, which was part of pack D. I'm gonna use a little bit shorter one. That. Screw in that back one first, kinda of hold it in place. And then I'm gonna screw in my front ones with the little guys. Like so. Don't tighten them all the way down until you have them all in. So then just make sure the whole thing's squared up and go ahead and tighten them down. slide this guy back on just for now I recommend leaving it waiting because then when you have the weight of the projector except especially if you're gonna be doing it by yourself you can just slide the projector right on versus having to try to thread it and then if you accidentally cross thread it you're screwed so just leave this off and then what we'll do is mount this to the ceiling and then the projector will just right on there so the next step is going to be mounting this bad boy to the ceiling. So that's what we're going to do. This is just a cover, plastic cover. I normally put the creases towards the back. You got several bolt patterns. What I recommend is if you have a stud that is running horizontal or vertical, just mount it right in the middle of the stud or if you have to hit the side of the stud, mount it in the stud here and put 100 pound drywall anchors on this side. But definitely want to hit a stud. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Let's find out where our studs are. Okay guys, I'm back over here. And the reason is, is because I wanna to explain to you the proper way to mount the projector so that you just do it one time. You're going to make sure that the projector is lined up dead center with the screen. Another thing that you want to keep into consideration is the height of your room. A lot of you guys may have a vaulted ceiling that goes way up. Well, you need a drop down pole because the projector lens needs to be within, I would say about three feet of the top of the screen. In this situation, the roof's flat, so it's going to be perfect. We're just going to mount the projector flat up against the ceiling and the, we're going to flip the image and it's going to line up just right. So I'm going to measure out the center of the screen which I think was like 87 inches, something like that. We got 86 to the string. So we're going to go 87 and a quarter to the center of the lens on the projector. Let's do it. So this room is square, so I don't have to worry about doing anything fancy. In a room where maybe you have, you know, cutouts, you need to take that into consideration when you're measuring everything out. I'm going to use my tape again, just as a marker here. So 
So I think we're going to luck out on this one. Maybe. No, we're not. So it does need to sit center. So what we're going to do is put it right here like that. And I'm going to get some 100 pound drywall anchors to brace it to make sure that it's nice and solid. All right, so it's time to mount this bad boy. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up here. I'm going to just put one into the stud for now. See the, the mount starting to lift up the sheetrock? Slow down, because you'll, you'll crack it. This is definitely not a normal situation. I would not expect to see this in your own home. So you may want to pick up some sheetrock from Lakers. It's nice to have them around the house anyways. So. I'm going to go ahead and do two things, put the plastic piece on, put the set screw in for tightening this into place onto the bracket up top. So this goes ahead and puts on like that. And then this is labeled B, strong fine adjust mount. And then go ahead and screw this guy into the back side right here. And then screw this guy on. See, and the reason for that set uh, screw is situations like this. It's tight, which is great, but it's facing the wrong direction. So we want it facing back like this so that the labels on the adjustments are accurate. And we're gonna tighten it down because the gearbox is gonna do all the work for us. Little gears in here. out now. So what we're going to do is slide our projector on there, getting one step closer. If you're paranoid, 
like I am, go ahead and set your screws up here. Get ready so that you don't have to slide it on there and just leave it hanging there ready to fall down on you. You don't want to ruin your new $5,000 projector. like that but it's not locked in yet so don't get too comfortable gotta get your screws in there and you want it it slides front and back you want it centered up on the projector that way gravity naturally will allow it to to move easier. Okay, so customer said he wants surge protector, which is a very wise move. Um, lightning strikes will take these guys out every time. Uh, there's this little mini one outlet one I use. It's only 30 bucks. We'll go ahead and plug it in to that. And then he has a peace of mind and the manufacturer actually will warranty the projector if it does get hit by lightning and it goes out <laughs> so this is the search projector i was talking about guys look at this little guy it's perfect i use it on subs use it on projectors anything small they're only 29 dollars and it gets the job done without taking up a ton of space you don't want to put a giant search projector up there on top of the projector We have power. I'm gonna take my HDMI. Leave a little slack up here. Actually, since the hole's right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the rest in the ceiling. IR sensor. You guys are wondering what's going on here. Again, cat cable. Splice two of the strands in to the two cables on the IR and you can do the same thing on the receiving end and plug it into your control system. There's an IR sensor on these uh, Sony 295s on the back side here and there's one on the front side somewhere too. So your options. I'm just up here doing a little wire management right now, making it look a little bit better for the customer. Only takes a minute, so just cleaning it up. Okay. Let's go ahead and fire it up. I'll show you guys uh, how to align it properly. Okay, so we are making some progress, guys. The next step is going to be flipping the image so you're gonna hit the menu button you're gonna go down until you see image flip see that right there and then you go to horizontal and vertical see now it's right side up so then once you're done with that you're gonna hit pattern once we hit pattern we can shift the projector down. What I recommend you do is start out with the top of the projector uh, or top of the image in the top of the screen. See how it's crooked right now? Level that out first and then I'll show you what to do next. Also make sure front to back that your projector is level with earth. I have a level up on the projector right now to make sure that it's dead set, dead level. Because if, if you have it just down, even just a smidge like this or up a smidge, you're going to end up with what's called a keystone. And you can correct that, but you don't want to do that. It's going to skew your imaging. So with this micro adjustment mount, you can come right in here and quickly adjust it level or whatever this 
screen is. Shift it up to where it's you know, right in line with, with the top of the screen. And then the next thing we're gonna do is zoom it. See how it's a little too big for the screen? We're going to zoom until those inner lines right there line up. But now we have another problem. It's crooked on the bottom. So this is where a lot of people really struggle. They don't know what to do. And it's actually extremely simple. The reason that it's skewed over on the bottom right hand side is the same reason that it would be skewed if the projector wasn't sitting level. It's not projecting straight. So then you can take your micro adjustment knob and rotate the whole projector like this. And now see how it's getting more square? Makes sense now, right? So your image isn't on the screen anymore, but the shift, so shift it back. Look at that. You just align your projector in three minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. I want every single corner to line up perfect. Just like that. I mean, that's on the money. That's, that's what you want to see whenever you go to a line base. And now the last thing is going to be focus. So with focus, you're just going to go past, go back the other way, go past until it's crystal clear and it helps to turn the lights off whenever you do this. So what I'll do is come up here and just get right up on it and adjust it. Whoop, wrong way. See how it's getting sharp right there in the middle? Well, go fast a little bit, oh, blurry. Back the other way. And then just click by click you'll be able to tell, see, I went back the other way too far. So I'm just gonna, one little click at a time, go past again, oh, I'm getting a little bit more fuzzy. So now I'm gonna go back. And that's money right there. Perfect. So we can go ahead and exit out of it, make our connections to our amplifier, and Start playing. All right, so I'm sitting here with my customer in the room. What do you think of the difference between having a screen and not having a screen? Oh, it's huge. It's a huge difference. Awesome, actually. I love the fact that it is actually the movie experience now, as opposed to having it on the wall before. Yeah. <laughs> and it just really makes the projector shine. I, I love the fact that I went with the LEDs. I was hesitant there for it. Yeah. But the LED is, is an awesome touch. It's pretty sweet. And let me know if you need us to come back and put an outlet in, we can hide that wire. Yeah. Even off access, access, the um, viewing is crystal clear. Well, that concludes the video of the Sony 295 installation and alignment with the 133 inch zero edge pure gray screen. This is an incredible value, really good performance. If you're wanting to get into native 4K, this is a great system to get you going and it's not gonna break the bank. I hope that this helped you guys set up your own systems. All I ask is that if you'd like to purchase this product, make sure you give us a call, shoot us an email. We do have nationwide free shipping and a low price guarantee. This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for more. Until next time, thanks for watching. Yeah.